oh, I'm listening to an old love line and it's uh, oh, Ryan Reynolds and Trailer Reynolds. Trash or whatever her name is from Two Guys, a Girl in a Pizza Place. <laughs> Was that not Deborah Messing? No, Sorry, tra- not Deborah Messing. Uh, trailer Howard? Is that her name? <laughs> that's that's a name. Yeah, Trailer. Spelled like Taylor, but with an R after mm. the T. Trailer Howard is the girl from Two Guys, a Girl in a Pizza Place. And Adam Kroll mm. actually guest starred on that show. Uh, and that's what they're promoting on this. Oh, she's from Monk? I didn't know that. Yeah, she was the first uh, she was the first um, assistant. No, the second assistant. Yeah, they're doing another Monk thing. <laughs> yeah, like a final case movie. What is yeah. that coming out of there? Welcome to Namely 90s. The podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones. Google and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So, turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. That's right. You're listening to Namely 90s. My name's Andrew, and over there is Brandon. That's me. You can find us online or at, uh, nope. Yep. Yeah. So you can find us online at Namely90s.com or on can. Instagram and Blue Sky at Namely 90s and Namely90s.bsky.social. Those are also places. You can also find us on YouTube every Monday at youtube.com slash at namely 90s. And if you'd like to support the show, head over to patreon.com slash namely 90s and get signed up for one of our support levels. I don't know why I'm talking so quietly. I don't know why I'm talking so loud or so badly. I was, uh, Mm -hmm. I stumbled a bit there. Uh, It's been a minute since we've recorded. Well, I tried to say. You can find us online at, but I said the word or, and that just completely threw me into a tailspin. <laughs> you know? um, that happens. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what the, we've been, it's been a bit since we recorded, but we've been heavily focused on recording our fourth annual 12 days of Christmas specials. Yes. Which, which we also haven't recorded since last week. True. True. I was uh, away. Yes. But also we didn't have any schedule, did we? Because I was away. Yes. No, we have 10. (laughs) uh, Currently we have 10 recorded. Um, By the time this comes out, we'll have 11 done. And then the last one, you know, uh, someone, someone booked us for the last possible day. So fun. So fresh. (laughs) So clean. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll do it. It's going to be, it's going to be a thrill. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's well, coming up uh, 21st, 21st of December. Yeah. Uh, we have a new episode every day dropping from the 21st to the 1st of the new year. And uh, yeah, it'll be a fun time. A lot of returning friends from previous years. Yeah. Uh, um, mm-hmm. oh, I think we only have about a quarter percent new guests this year. Uh, which is good. That means the, yeah. our podcast friends are thriving and um, uh, it's much easier like working with people that we've worked with before because we don't yeah. have to like explain it. And, mm-hmm, and they're like, oh, singing. We did this previously. You know what else? Yeah. 30 minute episodes or 22 minute episodes. That's <laughs> really it, helping it keeping them, yeah, keeping <laughs> yeah. them under an hour. Uh, I think we only have one that's over an hour um, only by like a minute or two. Um, yeah. Also, I just like, I hate them <laughs> this year more than usual. So, oh, yeah, the so I'm just like not saying anything. Like, there, yeah, there's like, a, uh, like, yeah, there's been like a stretch of episodes where you're just like, I hate this. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I mean, really, um, it's, you just get so tired, but not, not the, not the specials, but the shows themselves. Mm-hmm. That's why we're watching them. So you don't have to. Yeah. Uh, don't. Uh, but uh, as fitting for the upcoming holiday season, it's snowing again yeah, here, yeah, not yeah. in California. In Seattle? Well, uh, no, Eastern Washington. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's it's all right. It just gets a bit dicey and icy. Dicey and icy. My nicknames in high school. <laughs> 
But uh, I think we're actually going to see each other this year on the Christmas break. Yes, hopefully. Uh, I don't know. It seems, seems like we have a short window. Uh, it's two to three days. I think I extended mine like one day further. Okay. I think I'm staying till the 21st or 22nd now. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah that should work. Because I'm now leaving later to go there it's a whole thing but Um, we don't uh, for the listeners uh we we don't need them to stalk (laughs) us yeah we either have to travel down to travel to each other's locale to see each other Mm -hmm. which is how physics work i guess in existence uh or we sometimes come together in the seattle area yes but um i don't think we'll have anything to record at that time so no nor any of our equipment (laughs) i mean we could do like a video for the socials if we true if if you're really raring to do that (laughs) No, uh. <laughs> <laughs> we can use the, the filter that gives you like the puppy dog nose and the ears. Yes, uh, that'll <laughs> that'll work. Um, yeah, uh, or the filter that somehow makes you not look overweight, which a lot of people seem to employ on the on the social medias. Yes, I believe it's called Ozempic. <laughs> <laughs> Topical. It also has. No, it's actually injectable. Yeah. <laughs> hey, a little medical oh, humor. Wow, that, well there done. It is. Well done. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, that's what we needed. A little <laughs> injection of humor. Oh, hey! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're pretty sharp over there. Wow. Oh. This has turned into okay. Let's just quit now. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but seriously, um, and angles. I think angles. Oh yeah, I always look up, and you have also started to look up. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times though, when I take a picture, I look down. Have you ever seen that picture mm-hmm. of the guy who looks like a thumb? Yes. I always look like that guy. I am the most unpleasant looking person on like any sort of selfie situation. No, even from above. Do yeah, when not, I do, do it from not, above, do, I always feel like I'm pouting to the camera. You like, do you mm, do duck lip. I'm smoldering. Mm. Uh oh, by the way, last night, none yeah. of this is actually related. I did one of those sip and paint things with my work people. Oh, how was that? Um, it was okay. My painting came out. Yeah, I'm going to send you. A, I'm going to show a picture of the painting oh. live on the air of this recording. And if he approves it, it'll be on uh, the YouTube version of this, which Andrew did not plug. Oh, uh, that's youtube.com slash. Oh, he didn't send it to me. I will send it to you as well. Uh, oh, it doesn't come through actually, on the camera. Very actually, well. it's on the camera. Uh, you yeah, can see but this at youtube.com slash adding. We need that. I mean, that looks pretty good uh, for not being able to see the strokes. Huh. Last that's, night. That's what she, she said. I'll send it to you so you can see it for real. Sure. Uh, anyway, that was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you sip? I sipped a nice, uh, what was it? A, uh, Mal- Malbec. Oh, wow. It yeah. was a. Let's see actually, if I find it. Uh, I will actually uh, put this photo in the episode because it does look better you can actually see the strokes on the tree okay it was a don miguel gascon reserva malbec it's from argentina from argentina don't cry for me uh, argentina uh, what was i watching where that was like a <clears throat> trivia that was a trivia question from something and uh, madonna like, was in that uh, the movie that uh, madonna was Evita, played mm-hmm. uh starring Madonna as herself playing Evita. I don't think like she say. wore that real, like that pointy bra in real life, though. Uh, are you saying Evita didn't wear the Evita pointy did bra? did not wear the pointy bra. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Madonna did. Um, speaking of things Madonna didn't do, uh, I made <laughs> you watch the trailer for uh, the Video Games were, uh, Awards were last week, and they just had a drop of a new uh, a new Jurassic Park game that looks like a survival horror game against the dinosaurs. Um, it's in, like Resident Evil meets Jurassic Park. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, it does have like a. It looks like maybe like an Uncharted type uh, engine, like. It also um, looks like a game I would keep dying in and then like throw the controller through the television. That's why I said survival horror. It reminded <laughs> me of like a Five Nights at Freddy's type thing. Um, the the new 3D ones where they're, yeah. I will uh, tell you, I, in, uh, speaking of throwing things, my uh, roommate in college, Dan, which, who you know from the yeah. wedding, um, mm-hmm. we would play NHL 
whatever version was out at that time, probably mm-hmm. 07 or something. And we would play these, we would play full length 60 minute games. Cause usually the 60 minute games are truncated. Like the clock runs fast. Right. So we play these full on 60 minute games and uh-huh. we'd be neck and neck the whole way through. And then he would always score. And they kid you not, this happened on a dozen occasions. Mm-hmm. He would score in the last minute <laughs> every time. And I would always, and at one point, that's how I broke one of my controllers. I, was I remember so you breaking angry. the controller. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I don't understand the logic of that or how that works, but. I mean, I know we've brought this up before, but one of our Have childhood we? friends, uh, yes, we, um, <laughs> Uh, one of our childhood friends was um, playing, I think, either GoldenEye or one of the PS2 mm-hmm. uh, James Bond games yeah. and got so angry and he just slammed his fist into the floor and broke his hand. Oh, it was his yeah. Wrist. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I just broke the controller, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, but I've also smacked my hand on stuff and it really doesn't feel good, but I've never broken it. I've never broken a controller. Although I think my couch might be broken from me getting angry and, and like just like hitting it with the side of my fist because I screwed up in a switch game. Uh, what is that about games, man? Infuriating. Where did the fun go? Yeah. It's not the lack of going to a therapist and letting a rage out. It's, it's the video games. It's false. <laughs> well, why did that be so damn hard? <laughs> They're not fun. They are know, fun, but are, I don't even remember what I was I, like. So sometimes, sometimes it's just like, oh, I'm so close to winning, and then it's like you get eked out right at the end, and it's just like, I well, need to I, focus this rage and let it leave me. We were talking about GTA Six before we started. Mm-hmm. Like, I really like the story mode of GTA was never really the attraction for me. I always just liked like randomly. Which is so weird. Well, the fun was in the open world concept back when it first came out. And so it was just all about like getting to do your own thing and mess around and run people over. I don't mean it's weird. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm the weird one, honestly, because everyone, everyone who plays GTA is like you. Yeah. Uh, they would like to just have a sandbox and be uh, psychopaths. And I really love the story of GTA. Like I, I loved GTA three, Vice City, San Andreas, um even the the story liberty city stories and um vice city stories were decent like the game sucked but the the story was good um and then gta 4 the story kind of started to get a little too convoluted but i think gta 5 really pulled it back by making it bigger and uh i I liked that story how about that gta 6 trailer though uh yeah it looks great looks like that did you see the hair on those people it's beautiful the game mm-hmm. not the hair yeah <laughs> are, no, are you it was excited funny. to go back in a year and change yeah i'll i'll probably get it uh i'll have to get a new console i'm sure but i someone pointed out some of the detail in it and like one of them is we well, have like the, you know you have the power lines or the telephone poles and the wires going between them mm-hmm. and there's always like that random coil of wire there that god only knows what's f- or sometimes there's like a coil of wire there. Like mm. even that is in the game. Like it's super, super realistic. It's crazy looking. I mean, just like the attention to detail on the stickers that are on the, um, like they bust or they, they like kick the door in on a, um, convenience store that they're about to rob at the end of the trailer. And there's just like all the like random, you must be 21 and over yeah. and drink alcohol. And like all those types of stickers are just on the door. And I'm just like, that's, like back in GTA three, that was just like a single texture that uh, yeah. they would just like copy and paste over the entire like window. And, and it was then, just opaque. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I, yeah, when they put the, the Vice City trailer up next to the um, or the Vice City beach up next to the GTA six beach or whatever, it's like, mm-hmm. wow, Vice City looks like ass. But like, that's what was good back then. That, that's what that was like state of the art. Yeah, I like right before the trailer dropped, I was watching like the evolution of, of 3D GTA trailers. Um, and I was just like, I was like, I remember that one. I remember how good that looked when I was 11 or 12 and watching that on like uh, a 480p monitor yeah. in, in, in my room. Uh, and like the, the vice city website was just like pink and blue. And it, like, you would find little random uh, videos that you could watch and yeah. I would just obsess over all of them. 
It feels like we're at a point though where like what was that 20 years ago, 15 years ago? 20. That's over 20 years ago. That was 2002. So yeah, I mean it's so it's 20ish years ago. Mm-hmm. Do you think that whatever iteration of GTA or any game that comes out 20 years from now, mm. is going to look that drastically different than what we have today. Yes. It's interesting to think about that because it's hard to imagine it being that different mm-hmm. and, and I can't, and we won't notice it. Yeah. And I, and I can't imagine what it would be like in 20 years. I won't <laughs> notice it because I'll either be dead or, uh, no, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, we, no, I mean, we won't, I don't think we'll notice it. Cause like, Looking back now, it was a slow burn as it yeah. kept getting, although they did really push a lot of 3D GTAs back in like the early 2000s. And then we had the long wait for GTA 4. And then we've had GTA 5 for the last decade and almost a half. Yeah, seriously. Um, so by the time, 20 years from now, we'll be on GTA 7. Yeah, exactly. I just, I, it's hard to imagine how it will look better, but it will somehow. Yeah. I mean, just the, uh, th- just the jump in the, from for from this last generation to the current gen, like the, it, it looks good. The, what's the, what's going to happen is FedEx is just going to drop a pistol off at your house. Yeah. And, and that'll, that'll you, be- you'll, you'll still have your VR goggles, but then you, you have the pistol. <laughs> You're just shooting actual people. Yeah. Oh, it's so realistic. I, keep I need them therapy screaming. after playing this game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, well I mean, um, yeah. I mean, do you think it'll be the magnum opus? Do you think that'll be their final GTA? Um, yeah. Cause they did all the cities. Mm-hmm. They redid them all. They haven't, um, they haven't gone back to London yet. No, it's too much of a, an industry. It, it's too much of a, a, a cash cow. I doubt it. Okay. I think there'll be more. Sorry, I cut off your uh, trans- no, you're fine. your uh, transition. Now that we're sixteen minutes, in. yeah, exactly. Uh, no, 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 sixteen minutes. Is okay. Uh, yeah, so we are doing a deep dive episode. Yes, final one of the year. Um, and uh, you know, apparently Macaulay Culkin got a, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame last week. Um, which someone told me you have to pay for those and pay to maintain them. Oh, I thought you tr- I thought he was going to try to sell it for drugs. Uh, you know he has a family now he married brenda song from uh the disney channel she was on like sweet life of zach and cody she was the asian uh disney channel star when uh when we were kids um and just uh, on the other side of kids and uh i don't think they're married but they have two kids together and they've been together for six years so i wonder how many people have been killed on a hollywood walk of fame star I would bet it's high or at least mugged <laughs> having watched yeah. that <laughs> at least mugged at least mugged and not by transformers um, or uh, or Scientologists. Uh, I definitely also, no one, uh, well, I was saying, no one knows what the hell his name is. How uh, many people named Macaulay have you met? Zero. Yeah. Have you met a Culkin? No. Okay. Although I did, I was looking up a list of vets Mm. because we're doing some stuff for work. (laughs) There was some guy with the last name Coffin. I'm like, that's not the first I want to (laughs) do. What an unfortunate last name. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. He got a star on the Walk of Fame. Um, Proud as two kids. Brenda Song. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so we're gonna look back at Home Alone. Deep Let's dive. do it. Last the deep one dive thing the from 1990 that we actually know something about. Yes, because everyone's watched it, and uh, yeah, Home Alone is 1990 American Christmas comedy film directed by Christopher, no, Chris Columbus, and written and produced by John Hughes. You know John Hughes? Do you know Chris Columbus? Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, discovered the new world, and then. <laughs> Uh, Howard Hughes was like a pilot or something <laughs> or also uh, an appliance store in Pullman. Uh, I know Chris Columbus, um, uh, the thing you would recognize, he shot the first two Harry Potters. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I remember this now. And John Hughes, um, all the eighties teen movies like, uh, breakfast club, all the Brat pack ones. 
Um, it's the first film in the Home Alone franchise. It stars Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern, John Hurd, and Catherine O'Hara. Uh, Culkin plays Kevin McAllister, a boy who defends his suburban Chicago home from a home invasion by a pair of robbers after his family accidentally leaves him behind on their Christmas vacation to Paris. Um, home Alone premiered in Chicago uh, in on the 10th of November 1990 and was theatrically released in the United States on the 16th. Uh, while the film's reception was initially mixed in later years, the reception has been generally positive with praise for the cast, humor, and music. Not shocking that the reviews were mixed. Yeah, I mean, uh, it definitely wasn't like a... For a kid's film, it was rowdy, but for a, if it was a, a film for adults, it was too juvenile. Yeah, plus, like, child actors are never good actors. They're just like pretty good it's mm-hmm. like um it's like when you say oh it's a really smart dog like yeah it's <laughs> smarter than other dogs but uh-huh. it's still a dog yeah <laughs> that's how i feel about child stars well, i mean like Tolkien. Uh, i for our name and minute i had to go back and get a clip from uncle buck which he's also in with john candy and but he's younger and uh like he had to do the who are you? <laughs> and it was just like the most stilted uh, child actor delivery ever. And then I was like, okay, so he definitely improved from being like six and when now he's eight or whatever. <laughs> uh, he went to acting class. Yeah, for at least a year. Um, the writer and producer John Hughes convinced Home Alone, or sorry, conceived Home Alone while preparing to go on vacation. Uh, he said, I was all, I was going away on vacation and making a list of everything I didn't want to forget. I thought, well, I better not forget my kids. And then I thought, what if I left my 10 year old son at home? What would he do? Uh, he wrote eight pages of notes that developed into the screenplay. Um, imagining that children are naturally most scared of robbers. He also worked on that aspect of the, f- of the film. Uh, home alone was initially set to be financed and distributed by Warner brothers. But, uh, while Hughes promised that he could make the movie for less than $10 million, um, which is considerably less than most feature film production wow. budgets of that era. Uh, he, it, th- yeah, they were concerned that the film might exceed the amount. So Hughes secretly met with 20th century Fox, which we know uh, published it um, before production to see if they would fund the project. If Warner provided inflexible. Uh, according to the executive producer, a copy of the script was clandestinely delivered to Fox, bypassing the legal restrictions that would have otherwise prevented Fox from seeing it until the project was in turnaround. Um, yeah, so he got Fox to do it. Uh, early in production, the budget grew to $14.7 million, and Warner Brothers demanded that it be cut to $1.2 or sorry, by $1.2 million, and the producers responded with a memo arguing that the budget could not be cut any further. Uh, Warner shut down protection, but it quickly resumed when Fox took it up or took Hughes up on his offer and grew the budget to 18 million. Um, Hughes originally wanted Patrick Reed Johnson to direct, he, but he was doing a film called Spaced Invaders, which I had never heard of. It's always sad when like notable people decline projects and then the project they decline is like amazing mm-hmm. and then they worked on some garbage. <laughs> or it's even worse when you have no idea who it is and you're like, oh, they or could have been famous. Is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Hughes turned to Chris Columbus, who uh, had left National Lampoon's Christmas vacation before shooting started because of a personality clash with Andrew. Can you guess uh, who on National Lampoon uh, someone had hmm. his personality conflict oh, with? Oh, let's see here. Could it be uh, Chevy Chase by che- Chevy, 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 Chevy's. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> shocking. Uh, yeah. Columbus said treated him like dirt. Uh, Hughes gave him the script for both Home Alone and Reach the Rock. Also, never heard of that one. Uh, Columbus chose to direct Home Alone as he found it funnier and liked the Christmas theme. Smart it man. was a diehard. <laughs> uh, Columbus did an uncredited rewrite of the script, um, which is where the character of Old Man Marley came in, and he uh, created. Sorry, uh, he created to. He created Old Man Marley to give the story more of a serious layer, as well as more emotional, happier ending. Because in the original script, the Wet Bandits clearly just caught Kevin and gutted him because they had no Old Man Marley to smack them with a shovel. Uh, he, <laughs> that's not true, by the way. That's just 
me extrapolating. Hughes suggested to Columbus that they cast Macaulay Culkin as Kevin because of his experience sh- while shooting Uncle Buck somehow. Uh, Columbus met with two other hundred actors. Sorry. Columbus met with 200 other actors for the parts, but he felt it was his, oh, which he felt was his directorial responsibility. Uh, John Mulaney, um, who currently has a child with Olivia Munn. Is that the guy that's supposed to be somehow funny? Yes. I think he was an SNL writer for a while. Um, He was asked to audition for the role of Kevin after being uh, scouted in a children's sketch comedy group, but his parents refused the opportunity. Are you sending your children to uh, children's sketch comedy classes? No, that's not. No. Uh, Improv. Uh, Eating disorder. I mean, not in this current landscape. Maybe. Eventually. Uh, Columbus finally met with Culkin and agreed that he was the right choice. After Robert De Niro and John Lovitz turned down the role of Harry, Joe Pesci uh, accepted it, and the role of Uncle Frank was written for Kelsey Grammer, uh, but was given to Jerry Bamman when Grammer was unavailable. Uh, also, Daniel Stern was cast as Marv, but before shooting started, um, the production told him that they were going to uh, extend from six weeks to eight and he dropped out after uh because he wouldn't be able to because he wasn't going to be paid for the extended schedule um and then daniel roebuck was hired to replace him but after two days of rehearsal columbus felt he was lacking chemistry with pesci and brought back stern um Mm. yeah uh the the second actor, who we have no idea who that is, later said that although he was upset to be fired from the production, he now believed the experience was a little blip of unimportance. Uh, Chris Farley also auditioned for the role of the Santa Claus impersonator, but he failed to impress Columbus. Oh, well, because he was on drugs. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe not at that time. Uh, he, probably he was on them, but he was, was, wasn't like... Yeah. Super strung out. Was he at... Was he on SNL in, the ni- uh, on, in 1990? or 89, I guess. Um, John Candy was available for one day to sh- sh- film his scenes, which took 23 hours to shoot. He was only paid $414 uh, since he did the film as a favor for Hughes. And in return, he was the only actor Hughes allowed to go off script. According to Columbus, all his dialogue was improvised. Huh? I, I would assume the polka stuff wasn't. <laughs> Because that's that was his character. I can't imagine that. Like, we're going to pay you four hundred bucks, but you can say whatever you want. Like, yeah, that's still not enough money. You're not going to be around children, so and yeah, we're just going to have you for a day. Four hundred fourteen dollars. Just keep cursing all you want. <laughs> uh, principal photography took place from February fourteenth, nineteen ninety, to May nineteen ninety, over a course of eighty three days on an eighteen point three million dollar budget. Um, yeah. The house exterior scenes were filmed on location, um, which is kind of where Hughes has shot previous films like The Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Sixteen Candles, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the only interiors of the house used for filming that made it to the finished film were the main staircase, basement, and attic, and most of the first floor landing. Uh, the treehouse like on the the, bo- the quintu- quintessential um, like house is in. Winnetka, Illinois. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. There's, there's just always a look to this, this '90s family house, and that mm-hmm. was it. '80s John Hughes, '90s John Hughes. I want to say Flubber. The house was also in Flubber. <clears throat> They're uh, like places that almost seem like they don't actually exist. You know, mm-hmm. like it, it, Winnetka, Illinois, doesn't even sound like a real place. It I, is. It's not a word. Or is it? What do you do there? Um, right. Uh, let's see. The tr- yeah, you you just be rich. Um, yeah. Uh, the treehouse in the backyard was built specifically for the film and dismantled after the filming ended. All right. wah, wah. Um. Oh, it's just a suburb of Chicago. Okay. Yeah, Winnetka. <laughs> Uh, the church exterior. <clears throat> Sorry, they filmed at O'Hare uh, International Airport for 16 hours over four 16 hour days, um, which served as both itself and Orly Airport in Paris. 
Um, have you been to O'Hare? Uh, a couple of times, not recently. Have you run through it like a crazy person? I don't run in airports. First of all, I can't Fair. run. Fair. Second of all, no. <laughs> we should uh, we should find the phone. Did have you seen any phone banks that you could crowd around with a large family calling uh, calling back to Chicago to see if your son's alive? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all these things no longer exist. Yeah, I don't think phone banks exist. Uh, pay phone banks, anyways. Um, let's see oh the for the film within a film do you remember that part uh angels with filthy souls which is parodies the 1938 crime films angels with dirty faces uh that's the where he's the he orders the pizza and then he has the volume turned up and the the machine gun shooting and the no i I, honestly i don't remember this movie you haven't seen the whole what you don't remember home alone (laughs) not in any great detail fair enough uh you know merry christmas you filthy animal no i mean i remember there was like some sort of movie playing like now that you remind me of it Mm -hmm. and but mostly i know like kid pulls a bunch of gags that are super unrealistic to hurt robbers that are trying to steal their silver i guess (laughs) their cutlery yeah Uh, i mean that's barely yeah that's barely that's like maybe the last third to fourth of the film okay but it is the important part that people remember. He's also, uh, anyway, um, let's see. Uh, the cinematographer recalled that Pesci was more difficult to work with than Culkin. Uh, the older actor believed that some of the dialogue was not of a quality to commensurate with his acting uh, ability. Uh, uh, he also resented the early unit calls because he, uh, would like to start his days with nine holes of golf before coming into work. So they pushed back from seven to nine. Dude, get over yourself. I don't care who you are. Uh, he was, he was riding high off of good fellows and yeah. Uh, yeah. Also cocaine. My probably. cousin Vinny. Yeah. Um, uh, Pesci said in a 2022 interview with people of working with Culkin, I intentionally limited my interactions with him to, res- to preserve the dynamic and made sure not to come across on the screen that we were in any way friendly in order to maintain the integrity of the adversarial <laughs> like, relationship. I wanted to ensure that I continued to come across as an a-hole. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. All right. Uh, let's see. The only curse word that made it in this film were was shit, which was accidentally said by Daniel Stern when his shoe fell through the pet door and hell when, uh, which he said, which is said by both Pesci and Stern after the characters encounter one another after going through Kevin's booby traps. Um, AKA H E double hockey sticks. Yes. Uh, and then Pesci's use of cartoon cursing or, uh, menacing gibber- gibberish, Garnered comparisons to Looney Tunes character Yosemite Sam. The Hesher, Fresher, Badger, Harder, Virgin. You just say Hesher? Yes. Okay. Hersher. Mix the booty, go smack. Um, an injury occurred between Pesci and Culkin during one of the rehearsals for the scene in which Harry tries to bite off Kevin's figure. Culkin still has the scar. And uh, that tarantula was real. That was on Stern's face. Oh no. Oh no. Mm. I would need a stunt double for that. It, 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 the shot is good though. It, I mean, yeah, I couldn't do it either. Um, also let's see. Columbus was able to get in touch with Steven Spielberg who helped him contact John Williams to reduce the final score after initially hoping to have Bruce Broughton score the film, uh, who was busy with the rescuers down under and had to cancel last minute. A uh, traditional Christmas song such as Old Holy Night and Carol of the Bells are featured prominently in the film, as well as the film's theme song, Somewhere in My Memory, which Andrew corrected me on last week because I said Somewhere in My Dreams. Um, and then the soundtrack was released by Sony Classical on cassette in December of 1990 and CD in 2015. When did the laser disc come out? No, just kidding. Uh, the 8-track. And now let's go to Brandon for the Namely 90s Minute. Welcome back to Namely 90s Minute. Every week we look back at a culturally relevant show, movie, or piece of pop culture that probably helps stoke the algorithm. This week, in honor of Macaulay Culkin getting his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, we're looking back at his best-known film, Home Alone. 
Home Alone is a 1990 Christmas comedy film directed by the guy from the first two Harry Potters and produced by the guy who did the Brat Pack movies. The film stars the kid who dies from a bee sting in My Girl, the guy who asks what kind of funny he is in Goodfellas, Phil from City Slickers, the rival of Tom Hanks in Big, Moira Rose from Schitt's Creek, Big Pete from The Adventures of Pete and Pete, Wallace Wells from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and Uncle Buck. The story starts with the McAllister extended family the night before they fly to Paris to spend Christmas there. Kevin, the youngest son of the household everyone is staying at, is constantly ridiculed by his siblings, cousins, and even his uncle. Fed up with this after his older brother ate the last slice of cheese pizza specifically ordered for him before he could have a piece, he attacks his brother, causing a Rube Goldberg level of chaos and destruction in the kitchen where everyone is eating, so he's sent to the attic for the evening. Kevin, in a moment of anger, yells at his mother, saying that he wished his family would disappear. During the night, a power outage occurs, which causes all the clocks in the house to reset and turn the alarms off, so the family wakes up in a rush to get to the airport and miscount the number of kids on their way out, leaving Kevin behind on accident. Kevin, being an idiot child, wakes up believing his wish came true and his whole family has disappeared. Now that they forgot him at home to go on their trip to Paris, he knew they were going on, all because the cars are still in the garage as the family took shuttles to the airport. Kevin enjoys his newfound freedom aside from getting scared by their old man neighbor who's rumored to be a serial killer by his idiot older brother. Then the wet bandits Harry and Marv who have been scoping up the neighborhood and hitting houses whose owners were on vacation set their sights on the McAllister household. Kevin manages to scare them off at first by building a very complex shadow puppet party out of cardboard cutouts, mannequins, a toy train, and ropes. Mid-flight to Paris, Kevin's mom realizes he isn't with them and once they land in Paris they find that flights back to Chicago are booked for the next two days and the power outage from before also took out the phone lines, so she books a flight to Scranton, Pennsylvania, where all flights to Chicago are also still booked. So she and the leader of a polka band rent a U-Haul and drive back together. Meanwhile, on Christmas Eve, Harry and Marv plan to break in and rob the house after discovering Kevin is on his own, so like the little psychopath he is, he sets up enough booby traps to put Jigsaw to shame. After torturing the robbers for a good third of the movie, Kevin zip lines from his room to the treehouse and then runs out to one of the empty houses on the street where he gets caught by the robbers until his scary old man neighbor hits them with a shovel and takes Kevin home where he leaves him, with no parental supervision, while the cops take care of the robbers. Kevin wakes up alone on Christmas Day, and then his mom shows up before the rest of the family shows up moments later. And that's Home Alone, in the Namely 90s Minute. More or less. And now, back to the show. Uh, Home Alone premiered in Chicago, as we said, on November 10th, 1990, and then was released uh, around the nation six days later. Um, why does everyone have such a hard on for Chicago, by the way? Uh, I believe that's where John Hughes grew up. But especially in like the 80s and 90s, like mm-hmm. everything was in Chicago. Family Matters, Two Guys, a Girl in a Pizza Place. Um, Most of the, yeah, that's fair. So I, it was the place to be. I think it represented America, man. Yeah, I guess it did. And then it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's a medical police... Or firefighter or garbage collector or a librarian show. Mm-hmm. Or uh, a widower. That's usually. I don't know. I'm not West sure Coast. if anyone's allowed to ever say again the phrase. It's a medical drama set in a busy Chicago hospital. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, did, wow. Yeah. Did they, did, did they beat that to death yet? <laughs> uh, and I would like to point out that uh, although. Michael Crichton uh, appears to have been late for the party. He wrote the uh, screenplay for ER in like the 70s. So mm. he was still a pioneer. And also it was, it predates most of the Chicago medical shows. Yeah. I also love the one where uh, it's uh, the the cop shows. And I'm stealing this joke from, from Adam Carolla, but it's mm. always like, you know, the guy, the, he's a detective, but he plays by his own rules. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah oh, yeah okay uh anyway. let's see um it was first released by fox video on vhs and your favorite laser disc in uh august 20th of 1991 uh it was the first video to go direct to sell rather than through video rental market the video rental oh market interesting first. Uh, yeah. oh, i didn't know it was a thing uh, it sold 11 million copies uh which generated revenue of 150 million uh, making it along with E.T., The Extraterrestrial, the highest selling video of all time at that point. Um, it, and due to sales, the film did not perform well in the rental market. So uh, yeah. starting to chip away at that that blockbuster, uh, <clears throat> if that existed in 1990. It did. Oh, oh in 1990? Ooh, good question. I or 1991. That. Yeah. 
Uh, it was later released on DVD uh, in October 1999. Um, then on Blu-ray in December of 2008. Uh, titled The Family Fun Edition, which uh, was packaged with Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Um, the RNC uh, edition? G- yes. The, <laughs> that's the one with um, presidential hopeful again, Donald <laughs> J. Josephat Trump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, slash part-time treasonist. Yeah. Treasonist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alleged, entrepreneur uh, yeah entrepreneur <laughs> alleged criminal um has he been convicted of anything yet no not yet oh god I can only hope on september uh 2020 uh, unless he wins the election and does do the dictatorship thing uh in 2024 and then we uh completely don't want to be uh killed by our dictator um in the future so <laughs> Yeah. Death. Dictator, still the best clue in Pictionary. <laughs> Is that yours? No, I uh, stole it from my wife's family, actually, uh, as far as I know. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah, it got a 30th anniversary Blu ray, HD, Ultra HD Blu ray release um, from Walt Stu- Disney Studios Home Entertainment. Um, it grossed 476.7 million worldwide, becoming the highest grossing live action comedy uh, until The Hangover Part 2 in 2011. Um, it, and that's against the budget of 18 point, what, 7 million? That's that an ROI earlier. right there. Oh, yes. Um, on its opening weekend, it grossed only 17 million. Um, or it grossed 17 million from a thousand one thousand two hundred and two theaters, which was an average of fourteen thousand two hundred and eleven per site, um, which is just six percent of the final total. Um and more screens were added over the coming weeks, with the peak screen count coming to uh, almost double. Uh, moreover, it was the high, second highest grossing film of 1990 behind Ghost. Ghost being the Patrick Swayze, um, I want to say Demi Moore, and uh, Whoopi Goldberg. There it is. Yeah, wh- Whoopi. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, am I wrong in thinking that Whoopi was the medium, medium right? But like yeah. she was, she was channeling Patrick Swayze, right? So in all those like romantic makeout and like clay throwing scenes, that was Whoopi. We just saw Swayze because he was possessing her. Yeah, right. Am I? I haven't watched Ghost in over twenty, twenty five years. But no, I don't think at that time he was possessing her yet. Or no, no. Cause she, cause she, so. could, cause she could feel him. So was, was, was Whoopi not like, I thought she was channeling him anyway. <laughs> uh, the, now she's channeling her inner lunatic. Uh, I mean, at least they got rid of what's her face on the view or the talk or whatever it is. Uh, second highest grossing film. Yep, just said that. Um, by the time the film had run its course in theaters, it was the third highest grossing film of all time worldwide. Uh, as in the United States and Canada, um, it was behind only Star Wars and E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Like, those are those movies. Are t- movies, yes. <laughs> um. The box office mojo estimates the film sold over 67.7 million tickets in the U.S. alone. Uh, it was the highest grossing Christmas film until Dr. Seuss's The Grinch in 2018, which doesn't make any sense to me because that was a horrible iteration with Benjamin Cumber Fiddle. Um, and uh, it made Culkin a child star. That can't be right. The The Grinch 2018. Supposedly. The one with Benefitch Cumberdatch. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what's the, my favorite one is the, uh, whatever one ends in cabbage patch. <laughs> uh, cabbage patch. Uh, <clears throat> Benjamin cabbage patch. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, it holds an approval rating of 65% based on 113 reviews uh, with an average rating of 5.9 out of 10. 
Um, they think that Home Alone's uneven but frequently funny. Uh, premise is stretched unreasonably thin, uh, but bu- buoyed by McCulkin's cute performance and strong supporting stars. Uh, Metacritic has it as a weighted score of 63 out of 100. Uh, Cinema Score gave it an A on an A plus to F scale. Uh, Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun Times at the time uh, get it gave the film a two pu- two and a half out of four star rating and two thumbs down. Wait, <laughs> I don't. What? Yep. Uh, it seems like there should be one up, one down, right? Or is he have to give his recommendation of whether or not to go see it? I guess. I guess uh, he compared. He compared the elaborate booby traps in the film to Rube Goldberg machines, uh, writing that they're the kinds of traps that any eight-year-old could devise if he had a budget of tens of thousands of dollars and the assistance of a crew of movie special effects people, and criticized the plot as so implausible that it makes it hard for him to really care about the plight of the kid, Kevin. Uh, However, he praised Colgate's performance. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I I guess, but like, isn't the point of movies suspension it's of fiction? Just, yeah, this is what I always get in trouble for. Like, this seems really unrealistic. It's fiction. It's fiction. Yeah, but I don't think something being fiction gives you, if it takes place in the real world, gives you license to just like make stuff happen. I mean, it was also the '90s. You can imagine leaving your child at home for uh, accidentally while going on a giant trip internationally like for example we're, we're re-watching 24 and all of this like fake tech babble like mm-hmm. really takes away from the show <laughs> if you know anything about technology I, I mean tech can you really grade it on the technology of now versus the technology of then no but they're just saying stuff that doesn't mean anything oh, it's just added for effect for people who don't know anything about computers in uh Oh, the tech babble. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, like, in Doctor Who, there's a famous line called, uh, he, re- he reverses the polarity of the neutron flow, <laughs> which if you, re- if you reverse the polarity of a neutron, it would still be a neutron. Is that when, like, an element has a period, the neutron flow? How long means <laughs> 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 Oh boy. Uh, yep. Uh <laughs> it remains a highly popular Christmas movie in Poland when it was uh it was played on Polsat, uh which is probably their satellite Poland uh channel every Christmas Eve. Um in 2010 when they didn't play Home Alone, uh, it caused over 90,000 people to protest on Facebook. Uh, and then in 2016, over 4.44 million uh, polls turned to the poll sat to watch Home Alone. Um, again, assuming that's their TV, like their main TV channel. Uh, since the 2010s, it, its TV trailers even include the tagline Christmas without him, it's absolutely impossible. It's, it's a big movie in Poland. I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was nominated for Golden Globes for Best Picture, uh, Musical or Comedy category, uh, Best Actor in a Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy uh, for Colkin, and uh, the Academy Award for Best Original Score for John Williams and Best Original Song for Somewhere in My Memory. Home Alone has since been considered one of the best Christmas films of all time. Uh, there is a 1989 French horror thriller film, which I'm not even... Uh, pe- Pierre Pare Noel, <clears throat> maybe. Uh, three, 3615 Code Pare Noel, which is about a young boy who's home alone with his elderly grandfather and has to fend off home invaders dressed up as Santa Claus. Uh, he has been noted, uh, and it has been noted for its similar plot lines to Home Alone. Um, the director, Rene Manzor, threatened the producer of Home Alone with legal action on the grounds of plagiarism. Uh, alleging that Home Alone was a remake of his film, um, but the film was never released in the United States during its original theatrical run uh, in January of 1990, by the way, and did not become wildly available here until 2018. So pretty sure he didn't win that one. Yeah. Also, Uh, so say they did use his story or something similar, like, hey, they took your game and went pro. Sorry. (laughs) 
I, I, I think you can't do that uh, with plagiarism laws in the United States. But yeah, knows? but uh, plagiarism, plagiarism, oh, oh boy. <laughs> the plagiarism, plagiarism laws. laws and all these lawsuits with like the musicians and stuff get out of control. Like their <clears throat> songs sounded like mine. Yeah, if, if only there were like uh, not a finite set of notes <laughs> that you could put together. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and then Home Alone's use in media. Um, Snoop Dogg's 1994 song Gin and Juice opens with a gag uh, with a teenage Snoop's parents have left him to watch the house in their absence and he puts his hands to his face like the classic Home Alone scream and then smokes a blunt <laughs> and then smokes a blunt uh, let's see uh, 2015 Culkin reprises his role as an adult Kevin McAllister in the inaugural episode of the Jack Dishel web series drivers spelled with a Y and no E in which uh, visibly disturbed McAllister recounts his experiences from the events of the first film and subsequently uses his signature tactics against the gunman. Um, let's see. 2016. Um, the Christmas set horror film better watch out, which I've never heard of. Uh, includes a scene with a character who's obsessed with the Home Alone films uh, and demonstrates how in real life it would be deadly for someone to be hit in the face with a paint can swung from a distance. Um, one of my favorites is season 13 episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Charlie's Home Alone, uh, which is a direct parody of the first Home Alone film. Uh, the gang leaves Charlie uh, on accident when they go to attend the Super Bowl, and Ch- Charlie m- mistakenly believes he must protect the bar by setting up traps only for himself to accidentally activate all the traps and uh, yeah, preventing him from performing his Super Bowl rituals. Um, yeah, let's see. Culkin reprised his role a few times uh, in parodies of the original film, in commercials, and with uh, Angry Video Game Nerd. He was also on an episode of Try Not to Laugh on Smosh, and I have no idea why. Um, the 2022 action comedy film Violent Night, which is actually really quite good. Uh, well, not quite good. It's watchable. <laughs> uh, references Home Alone several times um, with the Trudy Lightston attempt- character attempting to emulate Kevin McAllister's fighting tactics against the burglars who take her family hostage. Sequel wise, we have Home Alone 2 not Lost New York in 1992, which brought back most of the film's cast. Colkins paid uh, $4.5 million for the sequel compared to only uh, $1.100,000 for the original, but didn't need to do that. Um, yes, uh, the film within the film also got its sequel, Angels with Even Filthier Souls. Um, the third film, Home Alone 3, was released in 1997. Uh, with entirely different actors and characters as well as a different storyline uh, but Hughes wrote the screenplay I actually do like that one uh, I think it was director video Scarlett Johansson plays uh, Kevin's yeah. sister in that one um, or I don't know, even know if his name was Kevin and then a fourth made for TV film uh, followed in 2002 which is Home Alone 4 Taking Back the House um, which was on ABC no that one was a directed video as well Direct to uh, garbage just goes right in the trash can. Pretty much. I haven't even seen that one on um, Disney plus. Um, and then this one features some of the same characters who are in the first two films, but with the new cast and storyline, the fifth film uh, home alone of the holiday heist was on ABC family's countdown to 25 days of Christmas programming in 2012. Uh, and similarly to the third film does not focus on the McAllister family. And then finally, um, a, a sixth film was released digitally on Disney Plus last year. No, two year, two years ago now. What? Um, titled "Home Sweet Home Alone." Um, and wow. Buzz McAllister from the first uh, movie, played by Devin Ratray. Uh, that sounds like a Scooby Doo name. Ro ro. Um, in the first two films, he reprised his role in the film as in a cameo as a security guard or something. Uh, that's the one with Ellie Kemper and I can't believe that was two years ago. And wasn't it garbage? I didn't actually watch it yet. Oh, did you watch the trailer? We watched the trailer for this. We watched the trailer. Uh, I guess last year was the Santa Claus series, which they got a second season for. Um, 
Well, so Chris Columbus uh, later revealed that there had been discussion on a sequel starring Kevin's son, um, like 10 years ago ish. Um, what if Kevin is an adult and he has a kid, but they still wanted Joe Pesci and um, Stern uh, and th- their characters are still obsessed with the kid and they're going to get this Kevin's kid or something. I don't know. Yeah. Home Alone in a deep dive on Nate in the 90s. So you, you don't remember Home Alone uh, that well? Do you not yeah. watch it yearly? No. Hmm. Honestly, I think one of the things that probably saved it was having John Williams do the score. Oh, yeah. Because otherwise it just feels like a low rent kind of saw slapstick, you know. I mean, yeah, clearly fast. The, those those um, those criminals should have died multiple times. Uh, yeah, like the family guy clip home alone with with competent robbers and then like they walk in the door and he confronts them from the top of the stairs and he just immediately shoots him in the head I mean, and that's much. the end of the movie that's true there's a lot of like let's walk directly into this trap yeah oh man. this clear trap i also always get it mixed up with the movie mouse hunt i am not familiar with mouse hunt yeah it's got nathan lane I the birdcage. Uh Nathan Lane, Lee Evans, Christopher Walken. And basically they like there's a mouse in this house that they're trying to renovate, I think. It's um it's it's ratatouille before ratatouille. <laughs> wow. Um Yeah, there's a Victorian mansion that they're trying to work on and there's like a mouse that keeps doing stuff to them. Like they're trying to catch the mouse. They keep hurting themselves. I have never seen this film. I've seen parts of this one. <clears throat> is this a, is this a, is this a, your thing? Like I see a Maine Coon cat named Catzilla. No. Uh, and it isn't well liked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, home, uh, I feel like home alone is, in my top five Christmas movies, like I don't sit down and watch Christmas movies anymore. But like, if if I had a choice, if I was being made to watch them, I would pick like probably Home Alone, Christmas Vacation, uh, Die Hard, and Die Hard. yeah, um, the top three. Yeah, top three. Well, I, I hear you. Um, uh, yeah, we don't watch Christmas movies, so your wife watched Jingle All the Way, like. Yeah, the I don't moment, watch oh, okay. Jingle All the Way. Oh. The moment it turned oh. into December. Yeah. <laughs> Get to the chopper. I am not a bevet. Um. <laughs> Why does this guy have an accent? <laughs> His name's John Smith. It can't be John Smith. I know we've gone over this, but how is it John Smith? Uh, I am not a bevet. Um. <laughs> Any final thoughts on Home Alone? No, or, no, no, no. Or uh, no. Um, more final thoughts on Jingle All the Way? No, I'm good. All right. Uh, that's it for this week's Deep Dive Edition of Navy 90s. Remember, you can find new episodes out every Monday. Join us next week for our final regular episode of the year. How did I know that? Uh, find us on Instagram, Blue Sky, and YouTube <laughs> at Navy 90s of 90 s and tell us what you want us to talk about on future deep dive episodes that will be next year. If you'd like to support the show, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Navy 90s, also 90s. And finally, you can contact us through our website, Navy 90s.com. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Audible, Home Alone, Deezer, TuneIn, iHeart, Good Pods, and wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Brandon, that's Andrew, and we'll catch you next time. Hello.